Hi, I'm Brett. So you remember our other video where we're talking about this unfortunate engine that was rebuilt um, using less than desirable uh, parts. Um, I've since spoken to the owner of the engine and we've given him a full summary of what needs to be done. And he's asked me to do another video to go into more detail um, because when he came in and we showed him the engine, we compared it to a recent engine that we're in the middle of rebuilding so you could understand the difference. So what I'm going to do in this video is compare um, what I have since found out more information about this engine compared to this engine that we're in the middle and are progressing through to one of our customers' engines, which is a lot more further progressed than this particular engine. So um, one of the things I failed to point out in the last video that was some things we found out later was when this engine was reassembled, and whilst it doesn't have the oil pump on the front now, it was missing some, some key components when the engine builder put it back together to locate the timing belt. And what I want to show you is on the front of this engine now, the oil pump's in place, but you see this guide here. Well, the timing belt sits between that guide and the tooth part of the belt, which is part of the crankshaft, which drives the timing belt to drive the camshafts when the heads are bolted on here. Now, that guide is designed to be a tight fit, but not rub on the belt, but reduces the risk of the belt jumping off these teeth when the engine is rotating. Now, unfortunately, on this other engine here, this particular part that I've just spoken about wasn't even refitted. And now, that is just absolutely catastrophic for potential engine reliability because you can jump a tooth on the crankshaft pulley and get all your timing out and then you can start bending valves and doing all sorts of other ugly things. And the other thing that I wanted to talk about is on the front of the engine when it goes back together, and we haven't, a fit, we haven't fitted it here, but there is a tensioner which is the um, newer model tensioner which fits on the front of the engine. It's designed to pivot with this hydraulic fitting inside here to keep the timing belt tight. And what that does is this particular bolt here bolts into a bracket that is then in turn bolted to the front of the block and that then pivots up and down. Now what's happened is the previous engine builder has damaged the um, the thread in the bracket and this is not actually the tensioner but there was another tensioner and this is one of the brackets here up top and I'll show you to you in a sec but the bolt that he used is put a nut on the end of it because the thread in the bracket had been damaged. Now this is a very very critical part of making sure that the tensioner is fitted correctly, aligned correctly to keep the belt tight. Make sure when you're putting this back together that that threaded part there neatly goes into the bracket and it tightens up firmly to make sure that this factory fitted tensioner does the job correctly. Now, what we'll also talk about is if you get down here, we can sort of talk about the differences between the closed decking. Now, this was done by another workshop. It's not done by us. What happened is the client blew a head gasket, pulled the engine apart, and then decided to, um, was convinced by the workshop to close deck it. But when we pulled the engine apart, sitting in the bore here was an enormous amount of oil. And we asked the question of, when were the pistons fitted because they looked a lot more older than what we were indicated by the client of when this engine was built. Now, when we found out what had happened was the engine was built, it was run up on the dyno, it then blew a head gasket, they pulled it apart, the builder then convinced the owner to close deck it and then put it all back together. But the vital part that they missed was when they closed decked it, they put the original factory, original modified pistons and rods and rings back in these bores without re-honing or boring the cylinders, which is a fatal mistake because when you put these fittings in here, it distorts the cylinder liners and you have to re-bore the cylinder to make sure they're perfectly round. Otherwise, the rings won't seat properly and that's the reason why this engine is now consuming a ridiculous amount of oil and when we pulled it apart the bore inside here was just so wet with oil so whereas if you look at this brand new engine here whilst it'll never look like that after it's finished running you can see the surface feature of the closed decking is very very tightly controlled and it's very very important to make sure this is absolutely 100 percent flat but this liner inside here needs to be perfectly round and machined in our case, what we do is we go first oversize with the pistons and rings to make sure that we then bore it and hone it to within a tolerance to meet the pistons and rings. But that boring has to be done after 
you do, do the closed decking to make sure it's perfectly round. So unfortunately, what we're going to be having to do for this client, um, and he's got to make a final decision, is we'll pull the pistons and rings out, we'll bore it, and then and you would have seen in one of our other videos, we'll put a very, very thin liner back in there so we can save his pistons and rods and reuse them, and then get the ball perfectly round and put it all back together, get a very nice, neat and tight fitting for those rings so the engine won't consume any oil. We'll start then putting it all back together. So there you have it. That's another little thing about what you should be looking for when you're building a Subaru EJ engine. So um, if you want some more information, check us out on uh, our Facebook. Make sure you subscribe to these videos. I really hope this has helped you learn a little bit more about your EJ series Subaru engine, whether it's a 2.5 litre engine like this one or a two litre engine like this one. They've still got a lot of great scope if it's done correctly. So no matter where you are in the world, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.